do you call this crow chasing? What do you even call this? <laughs> I always just call it a crow safari. A crow safari. <laughs> Have you ever wondered why sometimes in the winter there are thousands of crows flying through the air in Burlington? Well, today we are going to go out with naturalist educator Teague O'Connor, and he's been following the crows for the past 12 years. Ideally, they'll fly back over that way. So they kind of get patterned, and then they break the pattern, and then they'll get patterned again, and then they break it. I'm the executive director of Crow's Path, a nature connection program here in Burlington, and I also teach wildlife ecology and natural history courses at CCV, and I'm a friend of the crows <laughs> also. <laughs> With birds in particular, you see a lot of them congregating in massive, massive numbers in the winter. So you have the crow roost here, you know, I'm not really sure, five, ten thousand 10,000 birds that are congregating together. Yeah, these staging areas, I guess more and more crows start to arrive. All right, so now you gotta go, I guess, jump in a car and fall on. I was trying to explain this to my friends, and I'm like, you're doing what? Yeah. Doing, huh? <laughs> We started about an hour and a half or so before sunset, and you just sit around waiting until you see some crows fly overhead, and once you see a, a few flying in the same direction, then you can kind of start to narrow down where they're headed, and then you fall them to that spot, see where they are, and then you wait, and once they move, you fall them to the next spot and the next spot, and then eventually, right after dusk, you wind up at their final roosting spot for the night where they'll sleep. Yeah, okay, they're actually right. There's a big group of them right there. The unfortunate part of this is traffic. the traffic. <laughs> Don't they know we're on a crow safari? I know, right? It's unclear exactly why they uh, gather, but there are a bunch of different strong competing hypotheses that are probably all of them collectively are, are right. So one is around heat retention. Another strong one is barred owls are significant predators of crows, and so there's strength in numbers. Crows can be socially monogamous. Unmated pairs will come to the roost as like this sort of social hotspot for them, like the mall. And so they're coming, they're flirting, they're trying to find a mate for the spring. The other thing is just food communication. So. If you show up to the roost and you're down in Moncton and the food has been really poor and you come to the roost at night and you're like just listening to the gossip and trying to find out where there's like a dead moose or a roadkill deer or something like that, you can follow them to their next spot. They're able to communicate what a person looks like and to retain that information for two years. They have a really complex language and then the other thing it demonstrates is that they have a really long-lasting memory. Hey, maybe this was the right spot. You maybe think we so? nailed it. Is it <laughs> the last 70 years or so on crow roosting sites has showed that they've been increasingly congregating in urban areas. And so there used to be records of different crow roosts throughout the state of Vermont that were 200 to 500 birds and those have slowly gotten subsumed into the urban roost here in Burlington and also in Montpelier, but they started coming farther and farther away from their home territories and all sort of making their way towards Burlington. And the pretty amazing thing, I mean, it has to be worth it, they're flying upwards, you know, 50 miles. And so if you're doing that in the evening and you're doing that again in the morning, going back to where your food source is, there has to be a pretty big trade-off. So. All right, we're back to square one. It looks like they're headed back south now. They seem pretty indecisive at this point. So there's one little flock here that is splitting up. You know, one day they'll be foraging in Green Mountain Cemetery and then the next they'll be 100 yards to the south at the same time or 100 yards to the north. Um, and so they are generally congregating in this area, but they're moving around uh, quite a bit from one night to the next. So. That's why I can't just say like, okay, we'll go here, there, here, and here, and follow them in this perfect pattern. Yeah, you kind of have to just drive around with your windows down and, yeah. Oh, that's why you had the window down, to hear them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I've just had, yeah, a really strong uh, compulsion to follow them and track them from season to season and year to year. I think I've been drawn to crows for a long time, just from interactions with them as a kid and then as I got older and sort of trained in biology and natural history and seeing these 
sort of complex behaviors or sort of like trickstery kind of things. And then just as I've gotten older and tried to decipher the behavior and the patterns of the daily migrations, it just it has opened up this world that's really complex and confusing and mysterious. But Hopefully we can time it well to, to find that like last aging area. Um, and who knows where that final roosting site will be. Yeah. I mean, they don't know necessarily. Right. I think people are just primed to think that crows are always up to something devious and that they're just harbingers of something Doom? Because of Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, do you feel like crows kind of need a little PR makeover? I don't think they need a PR. I think they're probably just totally fine having people not totally comfortable around them. <laughs> Behind me is, it's hard to get an accurate estimate, but several thousand crows. My estimates are anywhere from five to 10,000 crows at night. And so essentially they have all congregated here flying um, from down south in Addison County and up north, uh, probably as far as the islands and Stowe as well, and all flying in towards uh, Burlington where they'll roost for the night. And they do this every night from October through March. It's amazing, right? And I think there's just some really strong element of mystery in this behavior that's so regular. And then every night is just so different. I feel like I'm always shrouded in some larger mystery of the crow, so yeah. Second Tuesday of every month, you can hear more from Teague about Wild Burlington, and we will get stuck in Vermont with you again real soon. Follow us, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Sign up for a weekly email alert. The girls are sleeping. Shh, be very, very quiet. Because if you move funny, they're all gonna go What's happening right now? To us? Uh... <laughs> What's happening?